But in regards to actual iron supplements, uh, people who would like to be taking that, should they take higher dosages to try to balance that? Or should they continue to take low dosages and just build it up? Yeah. So typically, if you just have iron deficiency, you wouldn't need to take high dose iron supplements. Mm. And you can just cope with trying to increase as much as you can iron in your diet, and then maybe have a multivitamin or a low dose iron supplement product that you can get from health food shops and things like that, that have just the amount of iron you need for your daily needs. But then if you are anemic, so you know that you're very tired and you go to your doctor and you have what we call a, a full blood count. So they take a blood sample, they t- send it to hospital to have it measured for hemoglobin. Um, then if you know you have a low hemoglobin, then generally your doctor will prescribe or recommend iron supplements. And when the doctor prescribes iron supplements, they're typically at higher dose. In the UK, the typical dose per tablet is 60 to 65 milligrams of iron. And they can recommend, depending on your hemoglobin level, anything from one tablet per day, two tablets per day, up to three tablets per day. And this is for high doses. This is high doses. So typically in the UK, the most recommended dose is two tablets per day. So this means 120 milligrams of iron uh, Mm. every day when you're anemic, because that means that you can start building up your hemoglobin levels within maybe a month. Mm -hmm. Uh, So typically, if you have a high dose supplement, you should expect your hemoglobin level to increase by half a point every week. So if your hemoglobin level was 11 instead of 12 and you are anemic, so that means that uh, within a month on high-dose iron supplements, you should be back to normal. If you're anemic with a low-dose iron supplement, it may take three to six months to actually be able to achieve normal hemoglobin levels. Mm. And some people may not be okay with that. They just don't want to feel tired for six months until their hemoglobin comes back up. So that's why when you're anemic, normally we recommend for a short period of time the higher dose supplements. But they do have uh, gastrointestinal side effects and symptoms that a lot of people are not happy to cope with. Hmm. And this has to do with the particular strain of so iron So it depends to some extent on the form of iron in supplements. Mm-hmm. And it's not only about the iron dose, it's also the type of iron. We know that some forms of the iron supplements do give more gastrointestinal disturbances than others. Others are better tolerated. But typically all forms of iron that are added to supplements, the current supplements that are available, they will all cause some form of gastrointestinal upset because they are a form of iron that what we call a very soluble form, very easily absorbed, because that's what the thinking and the tradition over years to really build iron supplements is really to try and make them as bioavailable or as easily absorbed as possible. And uh, for our listeners who might not know what bioavailable means, um, it's just the capacity of your body to be able to absorb certain nutrients from Mm -hmm. minerals or foods and whatnot. Yes, and then utilize those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, in terms of iron, bioavailability means absorbing that iron from the diet. Mm -hmm. It means getting the iron from the food to the function Mm -hmm. so that hemoglobin increases as quickly as possible. And this means that it needs to be very soluble and available form of iron, which then gives people gastrointestinal symptoms. Mm -hmm. But why is it that some individuals have such a negative response to it? So a lot of people respond negatively, especially to the high-dose supplements that typically have maybe above 60 milligrams of iron per day. Some people can develop heartburn, nausea, abdominal cramp, constipation is very common, um, diarrhea. So some people will develop constipation. Other people report diarrhea, and this seems to be related at least partially to the type of bacteria that we have in our colon, in our gut. Uh, So some people will have a a certain type of bacteria that puts them more at risk of having constipation, whereas others will have bacteria that are more prone to diarrhea. And with constipation, sometimes people also report headaches. Some of your colleagues at um, Cambridge, they're Mm -hmm. trying to develop a different kind of supplement that's better absorbed by the stomach and Mm -hmm. has minimal side effects that Mm -hmm. don't include constipation. Well, that's our hope, yes. Yes, crossing our fingers. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Yeah. And some of the work I'm doing in Gambia involves those supplements as well. Okay. Um, So we're testing these new supplements and hopefully we'll see an improvement there. This podcast was produced by the European Food Information Council as part of the Speaking Up for Science Action Network project.